Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. In today's video, we are going to be doing something similar I did not that long ago with concealers. We are going to have a showdown with the top five most hyped setting powders. The setting powders we're going to be talking about is the RCMA No Color Setting Powder, the Makeup Revolution Lace Setting Powder, the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder, the Too Faced Peach Perfect Translucent Setting Powder, and the Ben Nye Fair translucent setting powder. I'm going to talk about these five powders in order by the price point, starting with the cheapest one and ending the video with the most expensive one. And once we applied all five of them, I'm going to also tell you which one is my personal favorite and least favorite of these five. I feel like it's going to be really hard to show you the differences with setting powders because it's not like the pigmentation of an eyeshadow palette where it's so obvious. These are really subtle differences and most of the differences would only come out over a longer time once you have the powder on the whole day. So I'm not gonna show you how it looks after an 8 to 12 hours wear, but where I can, I'm gonna mention how much they are able to keep your oils in bay. Now, with all that being said, I also have to mention that most of these powders have dedicated videos on my channel. So I'm not gonna go into details of what they're made of, how much I like them, how to apply them, none of that. I'm just gonna tell you the price, how much product you get. I'm gonna show you how they look. I'm gonna tell you how much I like how they look and that's it. There's gonna be five powders, starting with the cheapest one, let's go. So the first one we're gonna test out is gonna be the Makeup Revolution lace powder. This is a dupe of the Ben Nye powders and I have it in the shade lace because I have quite pink undertones in my skin so I don't like to buy banana powders. I much prefer something a bit more cool toned, more skin toned. And the reason we're starting with this one is because this one only costs five pounds. I'm gonna set my face exactly the same way every single time because I want to be able to show you the difference between these powders. So I'm gonna use the exact same technique. I'm gonna take some on my beauty blender, start tapping it under my eyes. I'm not gonna bake or anything like that. I'm just gonna apply the powder everywhere on the face and then take a powder brush and I'm gonna remove the excess of the product. So this is the lace powder. Obviously we have absolutely nothing to compare it to yet. So I'm not going to talk too much about this powder just yet. I'm going to just show you how it looks like. I think it slightly altered the color of the foundation just because it still has a bit of a color to it. It modified the skin quite well and I wouldn't say that it looks significantly more dry than it did before. I don't think that it blurred my pores, maybe a little bit, but I wouldn't say that it's a blurring powder. The skin feels quite silky, but at some places still a bit tacky. I don't know if that's because I should have applied more powder or not, but it didn't completely dry down the foundation. I'm gonna quickly apply the rest of the face makeup on top of it to show you if it removes any of the powder, starting with the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Bronzer. And now after the bronzer, I'm going to do a little bit of contouring with my Cat Von D Shade and Light Palette. And I'm going to do some highlighter and blush. For blush, I'm going to use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Peach Love Blush Trio. 
And for highlighter, I'm going to use the Too Faced Love Light Highlighter. When I apply the rest of the powders, I'm not going to talk you through what face products I use on top of the powder because I'm going to be using exactly the same product, a part of the powder. So it's always going to be the same contour, bronzer, blush, highlighter, everything. Okay, and now before I would zoom you in, I'm just going to take a little bit of MAC Fix Plus and set everything. So this is how it looks so far. Obviously, the Fix Plus spray is still drying, so my face probably looks a little bit sweaty. But I can definitely tell you that this powder doesn't look dry, doesn't emphasize any texture, and doesn't settle into any of my fine lines. So I think it's a really, really nice powder, especially considering that it's only five pounds. Obviously, all the other powders are going to be more expensive than this one, but not necessarily better. So, yeah, like I said before, I can't really talk too much about this powder just yet because I don't have anything to compare it to. So now we're going to jump into the application of the next one and then we can start comparing them to each other. Okay, so now we're moving on to the second one, which is going to be the RCMA No Color Setting Powder. This is one of my all-time favorites. And what's also really, really good about this one is that for £12, you get 85 grams of product, which per gram actually makes it cheaper than the Revolution one. And if you guys haven't tried this setting powder yet, definitely go on and grab one because it's absolutely amazing. I honestly think that it's one of the best setting powders on the world. Obviously, we have some other really, really good setting powders today, but I have a feeling that this one is going to be in the top three. As you can see, it appears to be white and even though it's called no color setting powder I would still say that it is going to slightly alter the color of your foundation it is going to obviously lighten it but once it starts warming up on your skin it kind of melts into the skin and becomes transparent so if at first it appears to be white don't be scared, just give it a little bit of time because from the warmth of the skin is going to turn transparent. The only negative thing I can say about this powder is that once you open it, you have nowhere to pour the product. So you will always need to have somewhere to pour the product out. And that can be a little bit messy, especially if you are on the go so this one is definitely not like a travel friendly product but I would still say that it is an amazing powder especially if you are for example a makeup artist you are doing a lot of makeup looks something like this will be a really good value for your money so I just went ahead and I poured some out on a flat surface and now I'm gonna grab some using my sponge and just start applying it on the face. And now, just like before, I'm gonna take this large powder brush and I'm just gonna remove the excess powder from the face. So this is how we look like with just the powder on. I feel like I still look like a geisha, but like I said, you need to give it a little bit of time. I think that my pores look kind of similar, a little bit better than they did before. My under eyes definitely look less dry and the face doesn't feel sticky at all. It is completely dry. And it's definitely a very mattifying powder. It's one that you can kind of feel that it's tightening your pores. But I have a feeling that 
after I apply the rest of my makeup and I set it with the setting spray, I have a feeling that this tightening feeling will go away. So now I'm gonna go on and I'm going to apply the rest of the face makeup and then I'm gonna show you how it looks once everything else is applied on top of it. Okay, so this is how we look now once the rest of the face makeup is done and we sprayed it down with some MAC Fix Plus. I do think that the skin looks healthier and more perfect than it did with the previous powder. I have to say though that it still looks quite light, meaning that it still appears to lighten and brighten the face maybe a little bit more than I would want it to. Obviously it depends on you because I know some people would like to have lighter, brighter skin tones so they might appreciate that. I don't because I have a really really pale skin to be honest so I try to look as tanned as possible. A part of that my highlighter, my bronzer, everything looks really really nice. There's no texture to the skin. Like I said before, it's not sticky, which is also really really good. And I do feel like the tight feeling has gone away mostly. I can still feel it a little bit on my nose so maybe it's working where I normally produce the most oil and where I have the biggest pores. In my opinion it is a beautiful beautiful powder and if you have the option to pick this one up instead of the Revolution one definitely do so. First of all like I said it is overall cheaper because you have 85 grams of product for 12 pounds whilst from Revolution you get 35 grams of product for five pounds. Yeah, this is a really, really gorgeous powder. I absolutely love it. And this one is also quite good with controlling your oils. So if you have oily skin, definitely give this a try. Now without further ado, let's jump into powder number three. Okay, so the next one on the list is gonna be the Ben Nye powder. I don't have the banana powder, I have the fair one because again, I don't want my powder to have yellow undertones. I much prefer this cool toned pinky undertones. And the reason I included this one after the RCMA powder is because even though this one retails officially for eight pounds. One, it only has 42 grams of product in it. So per gram, it is more expensive than the RCM8 No Color Setting Powder. And two, most places will sell it for much more than the official price. If you live in the UK and you wanna buy this powder, I would suggest you go on the Tilt Makeup website because they are an official retailer of Ben Nye products and you will get them much cheaper than you would on eBay or Amazon. When I tried to look for it on eBay, I found it for about 15 to 25 pounds, which is far too much considering that it is an eight pound powder. As you guys know, the Makeup Revolution version retails for five pounds and it has less product in it. So the original Ben Nye powder is actually technically the same price. So why would you pick up a dupe that performs worse? when you can pick up the original one for technically the same price. It makes no sense. Anyhow, I have some of the product now in this little cap and I'm gonna start setting my makeup with it. 
I already removed and redone my foundation three times today so my skin starts looking a little bit more tired and dry. I hope it's not gonna alter the way the powder looks like though because this Ben Nye powder is really really beautiful. This powder again has a slight color to it. You will need to find the shade closest to your skin tone. And to be honest with you, this Ben Nye powder has loads of shades for darker skin tone. Obviously the most famous one is the banana powder. I would not suggest though picking up the banana powder because that one being the most famous, it costs more. They have other yellow toned shades that will cost less and they also have quite nice dark shades if you have darker skin. Okay, I just zoomed you guys in to hopefully show you a little bit better of how this powder looks like, although I do feel like it's gonna be really, really hard to differentiate these powders from each other because at the end of the day, it is a powder, so it's really hard to tell the difference. I do find that this powder is more blurring, especially much more than the first one. It is actually quite similar to the RCMA setting powder, however the RCMA looks quite white. My skin doesn't look dry. I do have that tightening feeling again that I had previously with the RCMA powder, but that could be because I already removed my makeup twice and applied it three times at this point. So it could be just my skin getting a bit tired. I do think that it's looking really, really nice. I'm gonna go on now and apply the rest of the face makeup and then we're gonna see if that alters the look of the powder at all. Okay, so let's have another look at this now that the rest of the makeup is done. The texture of the skin is beautiful. The feel of this powder is very, very similar to the feel of the RCMA powder. However, because there is a color selection of this one, I feel like it's gonna work much better for a lot of people, especially with people who have darker skin tones. Like I said, the price point of this one is really, really good. It's eight pounds. I feel like my pores look much better and my skin texture looks more even, which is really, really nice. And also my skin doesn't look dry whatsoever. So yeah, I do think that this one is really, really good. The only problem is that this is not the first time I use any of these powders and I already know that the next entry is gonna be the best one out of the five. So I think we should jump right into applying that one and let me show you how number four looks like. So the next powder we have here today is the Too Faced Peach Perfect Powder. And this is honestly my all time favorite powder. I have posted a video not that long ago testing out this powder and the foundation and they were both absolutely amazing. So I have a feeling that this is gonna come out as a winner, but I definitely want to test it out today before I declare it as a winner. So this powder retails for £22 in the UK and you get 35 grams of product, which is the same as the Revolution powder, but definitely less than the Ben Nye and the RCMA powder. With £22, it would be one of the most expensive regardless, but because you get less product in it, that makes it even more expensive. Obviously number five is gonna be even more expensive than this one. So once you take off the cap of this, you have another one that you need to flip open 
and then you have access to the product. So I'm gonna go on and pour some of this product out. This one is again called the translucent powder, but I don't know if you guys can tell, it is not translucent at all. It has a peachy tint to it. So this one is definitely not as pink as the Ben Nye one, but it does have a color to it. I do feel though that once you apply it and you give it a little bit of time to warm up on the skin, it does turn into quite a translucent powder. The reason I love this powder so much is because it doesn't just mattify the skin and set your foundation in place, but it also blurs the skin, keeps your oils in bay the whole day, and it also has an amazing peachy scent. I think what I love the most about it is definitely the blurring effect and how much it controls my oils because this powder definitely makes your skin look a lot better. So I just zoomed you guys in a little bit more to let you have a look at this powder as well. I think it looks absolutely flawless. I might be a bit biased because I started this video knowing that this is already my favorite out of the five, but I mean, I don't think a powder gets any better than this. It's not sticky at all and this one feels the least tightening out of the last three, so the Ben Nye, the RCMA and this one. This one feels really weightless, I don't feel like I have anything on my face. It's just a really, really nice powder. So just like before, I'm gonna quickly apply the rest of my makeup on the face now, and then I will show you once again how we're looking. So this is how this powder looks like once the rest of the makeup is applied and everything is sprayed down with some MAC Fix Plus. I still think it's absolutely beautiful. It doesn't look dry at all. The texture of the skin is really beautiful. To be honest, the Ben Nye powder is probably quite similar to it. The reason I prefer this one over the Ben Nye powder is because, like I said, this one is really, really good with controlling your oils and because it blurs the skin so nice and it just smells amazing. Like, I can still smell the sweet peaches and it's just such a nice scent. Anyhow, so this is how the Too Faced one looks like. And now I'm gonna show you the most expensive one out of the five, which is not even in the top three, in my opinion. Some of you might disagree with me about that, but I'm gonna show you now powder number five. All right, guys, so this is now number five, and that is the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. The reason this one is number five on my list is because this powder is 30 pounds for 29 grams of product. So out of all of them, this one is the smallest and the most expensive. And I will show you in a second how it looks like on the skin. This was the very first high-end setting powder I ever bought. I was previously using other drugstore setting powders and there was just so much hype about this powder here on YouTube that I literally thought that I have to have this one because this is gonna be a life-changing moment. My makeup is not gonna be cakey anymore. My skin is not gonna be dull anymore. My under eye is just gonna be erased from existence. Everything is gonna change and I'm gonna look like a top model. Now, I purchased it and 
like I said, it was £30, which is a lot of money. And I went home and I applied it and I immediately thought that I bought the wrong product. I was looking at my skin and it didn't look any better than it did before with the other setting powders. And it actually looked cakey. And I thought, I either bought the wrong product or I'm doing something wrong. So I started watching video after video on YouTube to see how they apply the product, but they did it the same way I did. And I realized that it's not me, it's the setting powder. To be quite honest with you, the only reason I repurchased the setting powder when I started my YouTube channel was that I had to have it as a reference because I feel like it's such a well-known setting powder that I wanted to be able to compare other products to it. But I definitely would not say that this is the best setting powder out there. It is okay, but for the price, no, like, no. There are much better powders out there for much less. This is how the product looks like. It has a slight yellow tint to it. So once again, it's called translucent, but it's not really translucent. I just wanted to say something quickly whilst I'm doing this. This video today is not a representation of every single powder out there. It's the five powders that I have and feel like are very, very famous and very iconic as far as setting powders go. But if you guys know about any other setting powders out there that are beautiful, just leave a comment down below. I am going to try them out, I promise. However, just like most of you, I am on a budget, so I can't afford to spend a lot of money on makeup. I'm trying to buy a couple of things every month, but I just moved house. I just got married, we want to buy a car, we want to start a family. As much as I love makeup, it's not my priority. Anyways, I just brought you guys a little bit closer to show you how this powder looks like. Now, my under eyes might look a bit more tired than before, simply because I applied and removed makeup so many times already. But regardless of that, I would still say that this powder looks a bit more dry around the under eyes. It does have a little bit of a blurring effect, like I actually feel like here my pores are not as visible as they were with the Revolution and the RCMA setting powder. The face is not sticky at all and the yellow color it's quite nice because it neutralizes the redness in my skin. However, as you can see, wherever I have some fine lines, the powder doesn't do the best job to cover that area. Yeah, I'm gonna go on and apply the rest of my makeup, but like I said, I definitely don't consider this powder to be in my top three. By the way, if any of you guys are interested, I am currently pre-filming quite a lot of videos because of the honeymoon. Basically, by the time I publish this video, I'm gonna be already back from my honeymoon because I have pre-filmed about a month's worth of videos at this point. We are gonna go to the USA again. We're gonna go to Las Vegas, Los Angeles and San Francisco and we're gonna stop at a lot of other places as well because we're gonna have a rental car and I think it's gonna be amazing especially because here in the UK it's like monsoon season already and it's gonna be lovely to have a little bit more sunshine before the winter. This is how the makeup looks like after I apply the rest of the face makeup and I spray down everything. I do think that the face itself looks lovely, but my under eyes look 
dry. I just zoom you in to show you my on the right and yeah, it kind of looks like a desert. As I said before, considering the price, I would definitely not say that this one is one of the best concealers. So that's all five of the powders, guys. Let me know in the comments down below which ones did you like. I'm gonna tell you quickly which ones I like the least and then the most. Number five is going to be the Revolution one because that looks the driest and it stays a little bit sticky. It doesn't really set the makeup as it should and it can look cakey. Number four is gonna be the Laura Mercier one because whilst it does blur a little bit more and controls the oils a little bit more, it still doesn't do enough, especially not enough to justify the price. It's really, really pricey for what it is and I don't feel like the price point is justified. Number three is going to be the RCMA setting powder. Amazing price point, amazing powder. I just feel like I need a little bit more blurring and I don't really like how white it is at first, even though after it warms up on the skin, it turns a bit more translucent, but I still feel like it makes me look like a ghost a little bit sometimes. Other than that, it's a nice powder. Number two is going to be the Ben Nye setting powder. Absolutely beautiful powder. Blurs, controls your oils. Overall makes your skin look really, really smooth and silky and it's absolutely beautiful. But the number one has to be the Too Faced Peach Perfect powder. It just smells amazing, blurs your skin keeps your oils in bay the whole day, absolutely amazing powder, and the price point of it is not bad at all. It is the second most expensive in this bunch, but for a good reason. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because I would love to have you here. Take care of yourself. Until next time, I will see you very soon.